Okay, <coughs> excuse me, the uh, next project is the 800 emergency radio system, service system, and uh, we have Sheriff Foster and Major Wesley Bolt. Good evening, it's been a pleasure to be back up in front of you <coughs> again. So, uh, before we get started, uh, we've got a number of people from the uh, emergency service community. This is a a system-wide project. It is not a sheriff's office project, but it is a, a system-wide project for the emergency services of Newberry County. We were, the sheriff's office is just the uh, uh, agency that coordinated the studies and presented the report. So I'd like to ask anybody that's with the emergency services if they would please stand up or raise their hand. Some of them are recognizable, some of them are not. Every single one of these folks out here, many of them, in fact, most of them are volunteers, uh, they're actually in kind of grave danger. In fact, we all are in grave danger because we have the inability to adequately communicate. And if we can't have communications, we can't adequately perform our duties and be safe in what we do. But also, if we can't communicate, we can't get to your homes if you, if we cannot tell the emergency service responding, whether the police, fire, or ambulance, how to get there or give updates. <clears throat> there simply are certain places in Newberry County that we can't talk from, and we especially can't talk from inside buildings. Even here in the city of Newberry, uh, if you're inside a home or one of the buildings downtown or in Walmart, uh, you can get everything else in Walmart but you can't communicate at it. At the end of so it, it's, it puts everybody in a lot of danger. Uh, I'll just give you an example looking at members of the community uh, where Doc MacArthur lives. It's, it's very poor communications. Uh, where Miss Willie Morris lives, extremely poor communications. So throughout the county, we don't have anybody here from chapels, I believe, but chapels is, is, a, is a tough place too. So we're looking to improve our communications to a modern system. The systems we operate now with the fire service were built out and improved along a plan <coughs> in the 1960s. It's probably actually 1950s <coughs> technology, but it's 1960s when we put most of the fire service uh, infrastructure in. It's been improved over over time, of course, and the police radios that we use now were, were built out and use a 1970s technology, all of which are, are grossly inadequate for what we do today. Just uh, a couple more points, and I'm going to turn it over to Major Wesley Bowen for more technical aspects of it and the more description of it. <clears throat> we uh, also uh, have some engineers here that could answer questions if you if you would need be, but uh, we we need to be able to communicate. Communicate is the communications is the key. We're now living in a in a in a flat world. The world is no longer round. We're flat, and we're all over the state working cases. And this last murder case we worked took us all over the state of South Carolina. And we were actually following a suspect on Tuesday, I believe it was Tuesday. Wednesday. Wednesday. We were following the suspect in the murder case on Wednesday, doing uh, surveillance and identification purposes. And we, out, we outran our radios. And we had to borrow radios from state law enforcement division so we were able to talk. But those radios we borrowed from the State Law Enforcement Division. Chris Johnson is here. He's also with the Rescue Squad. Uh, Chris coordinated that for us. We were able to talk in Aiken, South Carolina, just like we were right here. Um, so we've got people all over the place solving crime. So uh, we really need that. Our fire service, uh, it's more and more important with the standards that they have to meet, that they have radio communications, that they're inside a building. Uh, interior firefighters should have radio communications that they ought to be able to communicate. We don't really have that right now. So this time I'm going to turn it over to Major uh, Wesley Bowen. He'll make a beautiful presentation. 
How beautiful. All right. Well, for y'all that don't know me, I'm Weston Bowling. I've been with the Sheriff's Office going on 24 years and been with uh, Primary Fire and Rescue for going on 27. So I've uh, been in this for a many number of years. Of course, not as many as the Sheriff. <laughs> um, I'm going to talk to y'all a little bit and fill y'all in on everything. Our current radio system, uh, the fire departments and rescue squads are on VHF, law enforcement is on UHF, EMS is on VHF digital. They were upgraded when we did an air van. Um, but what this leads to is law enforcement can't talk to the fire department, um, EMS and rescue can't talk to each other because they're on different bands. So essentially what it takes is you, if you're, I'll get to it in a minute, but there's a major, if you major incident, you gotta have three radios to talk to everybody. Um, the towers are not networked, forcing the end user to select the channel. What that means is I got a repeater in Whitmire, a repeater in Newberry, a repeater in Little Mountain, and a repeater in Chapels. If a uh, deputy gets in a chase in Whitmire and ends up in Little Mountain, he's gotta worry about turning his radio to the right channel so he can get out before he starts chasing the person. So it is a safety issue. Um, the towers are not monitored for failures, meaning if something goes wrong with that system, we don't know it until it doesn't work anymore. There's no warning system, nothing's tied in to give us any warning that anything's going wrong. Um, state agencies and most surrounding agencies are on 800 megahertz, which is this uh, Palmet 800 system. We've got a booklet there that fills you in a little bit about it. Um, in 2009, Newberry County paid for a consultant to look at our radio networks and the initial thing that he said is we needed to look at 800 trunking system, which is what the Palmetto system is, which uh, is through a state um, set up. Set up. Uh, FCC regulations, we y'all heard about NAIR banding, I don't know if any of y'all understood that, but um, Back in 2013, we were mandated a narrow band, and it took a lot of coverage away from us. It, they narrowed the radio spectrum uh, to try to make more frequencies available because, as you know, everything in today's world is wireless. So when they did that, it, we um, did some changes, but we still lost considerable coverage um, with the same amount of radio system that we had before. It was probably close to half. Um, we have a lot of inter interference on current frequencies, everything's wireless, there's a lot of issues in the city of Newberry, the city of Newberry Fire Department has issues, um, city police have issues, we have issues when we're in the city, um, and there's other places just don't have coverage at all. Um, like I said before, if it's a major incident when all, all public safety entities are involved, you essentially need three different radios to sit down and talk to everybody or either dispatch has to repeat it over and over between all the different entities, and sometimes that gets lost, unfortunately, when they're busy. Um, to add channels, if we needed channels, you'd have to put another repeater at every site. Um, with a trunking system like we're looking at, they can add the channels and it's still using the frequencies that are available. Um, during busy times, if um, we have a fire or something, and multiple units are on the radio, they'll key on top of each other, and you can't understand anything anybody said. Um, the 800 system, only one person can get up at a time. Um, the penny sales tax solution, as Mr. Walter Black called it, is pretty much the only way we can get a good system for everybody. This includes um, city of Newberry, county of Newberry, town of Whitmire, town of Prosperity, all have public safety, law enforcement, whichever one. So over four governed bodies trying to get four governed bodies to agree to something that's getting one to do is hard enough. And this isn't a band-aid solution, this is a total solution for everybody in the county. Um, I've got some examples of some audio. I don't want to sit here and play all of them, but um, there's one training issue. It was in Lynch's Woods that we did. I, I got one recording at the bottom I'll play for you just so you can hear some of what we're dealing with. This is in Lynch's Woods, right behind the sheriff's office. Remember that the antenna that's recording is, of course, that dispatch was a 120-foot antenna compared to our little walkie-talkie or all. But um, I want y'all to hear what we deal with on a daily basis. Baby, come on now. Played for me earlier. 
Should have pulled out my thumb drive. I guess it was on there, huh? No. Okay. Let's try again. As you can see, it doesn't work very well. There we go. Get it to stop. <laughs> it keeps going because nobody heard anything anybody was saying. <laughs> so if you deal with that on daily, you see how difficult it is. And that's that's in Leach's Woods. The repeater's right here in Newberry, and it should be no problem to communicate. Upgrade plans. Currently, Palmetto has three existing sites in Little Mountain. Uh, Newberry on General Henderson Road and one in jo at the Joanna exit on I-26. Uh, we will move the existing tower at Chapel's Fire Department to Stony Hill on Newberry County Water and Sewer Authority property right there at um, Beatmall's um, Gen. Build out two large towers, one at Consolidated and one at Chapel's Fire Department to increase coverage. Uh, the reason I chose those fire departments there on, on the extreme edges and both of them have and deal with rivers and we have a very bad issue when we have to do rescues or anything on the river. Um, also, they both fire departments will have full generator backup, which I'll be using that to help save money um, on the whole project. Um, add other repeater sites to uh, with my water tank on 121 and Silver Street water tank right there at Deadfall and Highway 121. It'll be a total of eight repeater sites will give us 95% coverage from Milwaukee Talkie. Currently, we're probably running 70 to 75% from walkie-talkie if you're on the right channel. Um, so that would be a great increase for our coverage. All emergency services would be on one radio. So instead of worrying about three different radios, no matter what, you could turn the channel, you could talk to anybody you needed to. All sites would have generator backup. All sites would have a concrete communication shelter with air conditioning to keep the systems cool. Essentially, when you network things, you're building a computer network. Computer networks don't like to get hot, so it would have to have an air conditioning building to keep the network. Every emergency service radio would be replaced with a new 800 one. Uh, dispatch radios would be upgraded with new capabilities. What I would be doing is consolidating five different radio systems that are currently in use. The City of Newberry Police Department, City of Newberry Fire Department, Newberry County EMS, Newberry County Sheriff's Office, which also the town of Whitmire, Prosperity, and the Corners Office use, Newberry County Fire and Rescue, which includes Hazmat. There's approximately 650 first responders for law enforcement, fire, rescue, and EMS in the county by my count, everything that I pull together. Um, a lot of them do multiple jobs, two or three different stations. All, uh, all county emergency services will be able to talk or hear each other on one radio. Uh, Palmetto 800 is a statewide system, and other surrounding agencies' channels could be programmed. So if we need to talk to Fairfield, Greenwood's currently putting um, 800 stuff on, on their penny uh, sales tax as well. Um, Lexington and Richland's already full users. Lawrence Law Enforcement is. Fairfield is currently um, looking at uh, upgrading to a full 800 as well, but they're fixing to get a big tax base increase uh, <coughs> over there. So um, everybody but Saluda and Union is looking to go to 800 around us. So. All state agencies, except for DNR on Palmetto 800, that's Highway Patrol, that's State Law Enforcement Division, 
DHEC, you name it. Every state any agency except for DNR is using the Palmetto 800 radio. If EMS or a deputy takes a transport to Charleston, it's not unusual for us to have to take a mental transport or, or whether a hospital has to take a burn patient to Augusta. Even if they're out of the county, they can turn to a channel, be able to talk from anywhere in the state, back our dispatch, just like they were sitting there. And uh, if they have any issues or problems, they can dispatch can know and, and communicate with them even outside of the county. Uh, with recent events such as Plumbiana Mall shooting incident, um, it's needed more than ever because that was a, a mess. We had a, a, one of our guys down there in the middle of that as well trying to help out. Uh, another incident we dealt with that we had multiple agencies coming in, we had an issue communicating was when uh, the juveniles uh, from Tennessee that we ended up getting a chase and they had committed a murder in Tennessee and we chased them all over the county for in the middle of trying to move into the dispatch center. So uh, that was another incident. This would have been a great help. Gives the ability to talk with every surrounding county except Union and Slew. A current radio system will stay in place for primary stations to respond to these areas. <coughs> Gives the ability to talk with major backup departments that will come to assist Newberry County with an incident, which will be Sled, Highway Patrol, Lexington, Richard County, Columbia Fire. Gives new buried uh, departments the ability to talk to each other or even go to the same channel. If it's a major incident, law enforcement, EMS, and fire can all be on one channel and be on the same page and, 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 and everybody work together in one. Based on current trends, it's not if, but when it's going to happen here. Um, well, the way it feels this week has been pretty close to it. <laughs> of course. Not. Um, all upgrades and repairs of the radio system would be responsible for responsibility of Palmetto 800 at no additional cost. It would give us the ability to add needed channels, um, the ability to encrypt traffic. Um, one of the issues we've ran into over the years, if law enforcement was outside and I got a barricaded suspect inside the house, he's got a scanner sitting there listening to everything that's going on outside his house and that's not good business when I need to come inside. Um, so that would be have the ability to um, encrypted radio traffic so a scanner couldn't hear it. Uh, the ability to integrate other systems, um, the Motorola systems that, that we're looking at, currently fire service, um, there's MSA and Scott have air packs that integrate with the system and do accountability and everything, have a built-in mic in the mass that will link Bluetooth to the radio, also systems that can use do accountability and you can pull up a computer screen and each one will send this GPS out to this computer and you can sit there and see everybody that's on the scene just by their radio. So there's a lot of stuff. There's also a new mic that just came out. It's actually a shoulder mic for your radio, but it's also a body camera for law enforcement. So we will tie your body camera to the radio, pulls the GPS from the radio and it actually even makes a map of where, where the video was filmed at. It will show you a map just built from the radio. So there's a lot of other systems that integrate with this. Uh, the ability to have programmers trained to program up the radios at no cost. So there would be a group of people from Newberry County who would be go through training and be able to program the radios when things needed updated and changing so we wouldn't have to pay $50 a radio to get a program. Um, we have the ability to do that right here in house. Uh, the ability to lease out tower space on new towers to produce revenue to help cover cost. If, um, especially if chapels has a terrible cell phone coverage, um, if they want to rent out space, currently um, space is running from about twelve to sixteen hundred dollars a month. We we would have the ability to rent out space. Um, on these towers. Emergency beacons can be set off on each radio to give dispatch the GPS coordinates of the radio and, and the radio information who owns it and uh, if they need help they can just simply mash a button. Um, as a capability of doing automated vehicle location which the GPS from the radio sends back through a data signal and uh, maps the vehicles on, on, a, on the screen of dispatch. <coughs> that capability is there. All emergency personnel can communicate um, stun capability, if a radio gets keyed up and ties up the system, dispatcher has the ability to knock it off the air and until it's reset, can't come back on the air. They can just totally knock it off. Um, also, if a radio is lost or stolen, they can be disabled so nobody else can use it. You can just 
just like your cell phone. I lost my cell phone, I want you to cut it off. That's what you do. Um, the end user will hear all radio traffic. This is a coverage map of with the locations that I've got for the um, for the repeater sites. Um, everything in color is coverage with a walkie-talkie. So it would, with a car unit or a mobile unit, you would be 100% covered by far. But all of this, the only places that you don't have is a couple little places up in the corner of Whitmire during, in the pine forest. <laughs> And a little bit down here in the hole of the peak, the walkie-talkie may have difficulty. So this is worst-case scenario, so I think we would be even better than that. Cost breakdown, um, $1.1 million to build out new towers, communication building, and purchase generator sets. $6.3 million to purchase radios for all vehicles, base stations, dispatch, um, and portables. There'd be over 800 radios involved. Um, and, and the installs and communications, the tower locations of the vehicles. So 1.1 buys all the towers and generators and comm bills, 6.3 buys all the radios and does all the installs and everything else is involved in the project. So it'd be 7.4 million needed from the city penny sales tax solution. And then there's 2.5 million to cover 1,200 users for 10 years in a contract. Um, we were told that users' fees cannot be put on the penny sales tax, um, so actually the county has agreed to cover um, the $2.5 million over 10 years, which they would end up paying approximately $250,000 a year for users' fees, but they've agreed to do that for everyone, so that would include the city of Newberry, Whitmire, and Prosperity. So that gives them 10 years to uh, um, budget any user costs. Essentially what it boils down to is like your cell phone. You're paying a user fee per month to use that radio on the system just like you are your cell phone. So for 10 years, everything will be covered under the agreement with council. Budgetary figures would get deductions and credits for <coughs> furnishing the towers, communication buildings, generators, and state credits. The ability to rent out tower space to sell companies and other radio users, the average monthly lease would be $1,200, $1,600 a month. Um, paid contract gives 10 years for agencies to budget cost of service to, uh, and to possibly rent out the tower space and start hopefully getting some income there. If you cannot communicate during an emergency, the operation is bound to fail. Um, our current radio network is outdated technology and difficulty of use is unsafe. And this project will affect every single citizen in Newberry County as well as visitors and people passing through. I mean, every, just about every member of this community is going to need fire, law enforcement, <coughs> EMS, um, sometime during their lifetime. So essentially it's going to deal with every single citizen in this county. And nobody's left out of this. This is, this is every first responder agency that we've got. And the ending, um, when the fire is out, all the victims are pulled from a crashed car and transported for help. When the stabbing and shooting is over, when our tour of duty is ended, we as first responders want to feel conf confident that we will be returning home to our loved ones. The radio is our lifeline and what we depend on every day to make sure that at least we have a good chance to go home. And uh, essentially, the radio system is that. It's what we depend on day in and day out. All right. Questions? <laughs> Questions or any members? Um, if you look at the um, handout I gave you from, from the um, Motorola, the, the, it's got the other surrounding counties that either um, are using 800 and the ones that don't. You'll see a large majority of the state either had their own system that's integrated with it or are or, or part of the Palmet 800. It's a, it's a map in there and also the coverage map. Based on previous uh, <coughs> presentations, I guess this one is not feasible. No, sir. If, if, if you build out the towers and you don't get the radios, they're no good. If you get the radios and don't get the coverage you need, they're no good. Um, so unfortunately, I, I would let you know that I started this project around $10.7 million. Um, I called, got estimates on everything, trying to narrow it down as tight as I possibly could. Um, been before county council and went through this whole project with them. 
um, it's as tight as I can possibly make it. It's, it is a lot of money, um, but I, I think it's well needed um, money to uh, help all of us. And there again, it's, it's covering four different um, governing bodies, whether it be town of Crosshair, Whitmire, the county, and the city. It would put you in a pickle to go with less radios, I guess. Um, actually, that isn't every radio that I need. That is as cut down as I can. Um, every fire truck, police car, ambulance, all that's got to be done. And then we've got almost 400 um, volunteers in the county um, on top of that. So we're, we're a couple hundred radios short even with that, but we can manage to get our operations done. That, that, is, not handling, that is not handling a radio. To every volunteer we have, that's that's actually cut down. Yeah. Yes. Sir. Yeah. How about an 800? That's the latest uh, mode of technology. Yes, ma'am. And they're currently running the state, and they're currently upgrading the whole system. So we look to go online. It will be completed, and it will be a full P25, um, latest and greatest updated. They're currently doing the whole state system right now. How long would it take to phase in this entire project? This entire project, I'm looking probably 18 to 24 months before it could be phased in from, from get go. I know this is a hard question to answer because I have a hard time answering it myself in my business, but how long is this particular technology going to be around, do we know? Um, well, the good thing with this is, is the state system and part of the agreement with the state is they continue to update it. They've been running on the platform that they're on currently um, since probably started around 92, and now they're going to the latest and greatest platform now, so they have agreements with the state to upgrade the system to components that, that are more up to date. So that's part of the agreement they have with the state. And I realize we're, I, I asked that question and we're using Sheriff, did you say 1970s? <laughs> well, the 19, 1970 technology for law enforcement, the fire service is probably using 1950s technology. The repeaters have been updated, but the technology hasn't changed. They're not <laughs> networked, they're standalone. <clears throat> you gotta know which channel to turn to to get to, get to where you need. Basically, what we got here is we got a pair of old shoes, but we got some decent shoe polish on it right now. <laughs> you have it. I don't know if any one of the firemen or rescue members want to speak about it just for a moment to tell what the, how they feel about it. Or uh, Wesley has done a beautiful job, as, as I mentioned before. <laughs> I'm Larry Dior. Uh, I've been with Consolidated Fire Department for 46 years now. And we pretty much, uh, as you found out uh, three weeks ago, I guess, with our water situation, uh, we have to have, uh, we have some big tankers, uh, 3,000 gallon tankers, which we travel pretty much all over the county when they need these big tankers. Uh, and just in our area on Highway 34, everything on coming toward Newberry, everything on the lower side of 34, we have to get on one repeater, a little mountain repeater. Everything on the upper side we have to switch over to the Whitman repeater. We can't talk. Uh, our radio system <coughs> in the consolidated area is uh, half the time we don't. We can't even talk. Sheriff's department. We've been on calls. They standing there with the walkie talkies <coughs> up in the air, trying to get back to Newberry, and we have very little reception. Uh, and if you drive in these 3,000 gallon tankers, tandem trucks, you can't be down switching the radio over and trying to get back to Newberry or 
Whitmire because we back up Whitmire. Uh, we uh, go to Whitmire quite often, even in the new, uh, Union County. And uh, the reception on the radios, we, we don't have it. And uh, this is one project that I think would be uh, very, <laughs> I don't know how we would act if we could talk on the radio, really. Because, uh, <laughs> to the trucks, and I also, uh, I would like, I would very much recommend uh, y'all consider this project uh, for <clears throat> One thing in general, uh, when we talk about maybe for the benefit of a lot of people who don't understand radios, being able to, it was brought up and, and Captain, you did a good job with it, Sheriff did too. And we've touched on this a different, couple different projects. And radio communication is probably the key, not only to lives that are saved, but also it's a key to the police officer, the fireman, the EMS that are working. Uh, we can save them with a lot of situations with a strong radio system, whereas you would, as was indicated in one in part of the presentation the captain gave, that if you got a dead spots and if you notice that map, you pretty well covered the whole county. But if you have a dead spot, such as Chapel, such as in the lower extremes of, let's say, Peak in that area that dips down, and when you use the illustration of having a whole walkie up in your particular area to work. Uh, I understand this, and I'm probably one of the ones on this commission understands it more fully than some of the other commissioners. But my whole point is looking into what I call the future of radio technology in this county, which is important to law enforcement, EMS, what we've talked about. I know it's not a, a main water line bringing in economic growth. But we have to take, uh, I'm talking to commission members now, we have to take a probably a little different look at this project versus projects that we have in a one set solution. Now, having said that, I strongly advocate that, that this system, this system work, would work. And, and I think it's a system that it sounds like we don't really know exactly. Some people will say, why would you spend so much? As Captain Boland said, the radios are this, the amount of 6.3 is the total amount. Then you come back with the county going to pick up the maintenance for it. Uh, I've had said to me, what about if a radio is broken? <clears throat> that question was answered by, by Captain Bull on what we what we would do. But my second and most my last point would be this. I'll look at it with probably a different perspective because these folks that, especially law enforcement, EMS, and firemen, when they're inside that house fighting the fire, if they're able and can't communicate that whether it be in the city, whether it be building the building we've talked about. What is more important? The life that we can save and prevention of, of helping of one law enforcement agency being able to help another through these radio communications. So <clears throat> I know we as a commission, we have to discuss all these things. We have to take every, everything into respect. It. But uh, we have to have a lead project. And uh, of course, we'll be talking about that in the upcoming two, two meetings. And for the benefit, once again, I will be, tell you again how we do this. We'll vote on these, the commissioners will, and we'll tally up, and we'll go with projects. And I guess you all wanted to, one more time, to say this. Why we asked you, is this important? Or can you phase down? Because we try to bring in, as I've said four or five times, we try to bring in 
as much as we can in the county. It's one thing that I don't want to see happen, and that would be to lose the ability to have a one cent solution. Once again, it's a tax by word, but it's a solution too. If we stop that, it'd be hard to restart. The bottom line on this project is we are at, at the last stage of not being able to have full protection from all phases of public safety. This is very important. Communication is very important. And with that, that's, I've said what I want to say about it. I wanted to be people in public safety to know how I felt before we get to the deliberations of it. And it's not, I know we are held to the coffee room. I'll get picked out about that because we can't, you know, be one group can't carry us out and, and, and feed us and say, you know, push our project up. Uh, this pretty well stands on its own. Well, old Mr. Walter made a point. It's not one of those things a politician can go out in a pretty ball field with a bunch of kids playing and say, look what I did. It's nothing that you're really going to see, but every one of us is going to know it. And the easier we can get to you when you need help is what it all matters. Exactly. Any commissioners have any other questions? Anybody in the audience still want to say anything? I do, Mr. Chairman. Yes, sir. Jerry Coombe County has met. I remember this situation in uh, this Christmas week, dark and in, uh, interstate, rainy. We had an accident, tractor trailer involved, several vehicles, jackknife, ruptured fuel tanks going down the hill to a creek. And my hazmat team's up there trying to stop it. And unless you've been on the interstate at night in a situation like that, and most of these fellows in here have, you don't understand what I'm talking about. We had one lane shut down so we could clean it up and try to stop the flow into the creek. I have to communicate with DHEC, I have to communicate with the fire service, I have to communicate with uh, companies, and I have to communicate with, with uh, law enforcement. And we were in a spot on the other state up towards the lap exit. I couldn't communicate with this patch out here. And that's the kind of situation that uh, Wes is trying to get his point across to what Larry is saying. You know, we need help on these kind of things. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else? If not, appreciate the presentation. Thank you. Thank you all very much.